Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. Today I got out my scrap bin. This is actually my crumb bin. So I have a big bin of scraps. Crumbs are smaller than scraps. So I think scraps are kind of like anything about the size of your hand or bigger, um, or even a little smaller than that. But these, these are my crumbs. These are my smallest little bits. So I thought we would start putting some of these together today. I have actually started putting these together and have some completed blocks. Uh, let's see, I have one pretty big one. I'll lay these out so you can see them in a second a little bit better, but I have one pretty big one and then one, two, three smaller ones. And those are the ones that are squared off, but I also have some smaller pieces over here that are not squared off, but that I've started to kind of put some pieces together. So you can do crumb quilting in so many ways. And this is really going to be just our first crumb quilting. This one just has two pieces. Um, this is just our first crumb, crumb quilting adventure together, but there will be many more because there is so many crumb projects and tricks and tips. This one is bigger than a crumb. I'd probably cut that right in half. Uh, but these pieces still need to be paired with other pieces. So my vision for this project is that I am going to continue to make these blocks, but the blocks that I've made, they're not for a certain size. I basically make the block until I think it's kind of a nice size and then I square it off. And when I start putting those bigger blocks together, if I need to add a little fabric to the top or bottom or side to pair it with another block, I can do that at this point. So right now I'm not worried about the size of my blocks. I'm just worried about putting the pieces together. Now, some people when they crumb quilt, they do it completely randomly. They just take pieces out of their crumb bin and put them together. They don't think about um, the pattern or the color scheme or anything like that. And I think that is more traditional crumb quilting. I, however, am not focusing on a specific color scheme or theme, but when I put the pieces together, I am thoughtful about what looks nice together. So you can see this one is very kind of pink and, you know, little person like, um, but then, for example, this one is more of the like browns and gold tone scheme there. So, but by the time you put them all together into a big block, you have a bunch of different stuff happening. So that's my thought. I want to take some of the little pieces here and start kind of putting those together to make bigger pieces. And for qu crumb quilting, you do a lot of cutting and a lot of ironing. So my setup here is I have my sewing machine Right next to the sewing machine, I have my cutting mat here. Um, and then on the other side of my sewing machine, I have my wool ironing mat and iron. So I really don't have to move from this spot, which is ideal. So let's take a, look, a closer look at some of these crumb blocks and then start putting some new pieces through the machine. It kind of all over the place but in a good way because in crumb piecing you want things to be kind of wild and crazy so here's one this is the biggest piece and what I like to do when there's kind of uh, a piece of the fabric that I don't want to lose I will try my best to kind of center it like this butterfly or these little piggies here. And some of my favorite pieces of the crumb uh, quilting is where you get really, really small pieces or small strips. So as you can see, this is pretty, pretty small. And then this is just like the tiniest pop of red right there, which, which, is, which is pretty cool. So as you can see, you're not really oriented any direction. Some things are facing top or bottom or left or right. You're just kind of putting the pieces together. Here's another small little, little bit here. Here is the third one here. And you know, these greens up here are pretty cool. I like that. And the last one that I have. So these are all my completed ones. The little deer in the corner, super cute. I'm gonna put my longer strips aside for now because long strips are good for if you start to have too many pieces. It's nice to just have a nice solid strip without any seams to kind of hold everything together. So so my, my longer pieces will go aside. So here's a bunch that I've kind of paired two, two together that I will need to trim down and make a straight line. So for example, 
let's take this piece first. I want these to be about the same size. I'll make the pink a little bit bigger. I'm not even gonna use my ruler. I'm just gonna trim that off and throw that back into the bin. So these are generally the same size. I'll put them right sides together and I need to make sure I have a nice straight line. Now I think that this line is actually pretty straight, but I'm going to cut it anyway, just to trim it to make sure it's perfectly straight. And now I'll take this piece and I will put it through my machine, but not yet because I need to make sure I have a bunch of these so I can do them all at once. But I'm gonna put this aside onto my machine and then trim another one. So let's do this one next. So I have these two little squares. I'm gonna put them right sides together they're a nice size for each other, so I don't need to trim them down. I'll just trim the edge to make it nice and straight. And it goes next to my sewing machine. What do we have next? Okay, so we have kind of this purple and black. I'm gonna turn this over so that when I sew it, I'll be able to see the purple on top. I'll be able to see the purple sticking through on either side, which will give me a little bit of a guide. And then for this, I'm just gonna trim the edges just to, to make it easier to work with. And off to the machine, that goes. Now these pieces are too small, in my opinion, to crumb with, but I won't throw them away. These kind of go in, in the smallest little bits that I use for other things, but not back into the crumb bin. All right, here I have two, these look pretty good. And so as you can see, you just keep doing this with a bunch of pieces of two. So here's this, these two pieces. As you can see, they're pretty different sizes here. Um, so I'm gonna keep this in the middle of this strip so that I can get kind of the big chunk of this onto here. Then I'll use the other parts. I'll save the other parts for more crumbing those go back into the crumb bin. This red, white, and blue one was actually a face mask that I started that I did not finish. So that's why those pieces are already sewn together. And let's do one more. So we have these two, as you can see, the blue needs to be trimmed down. Back in the crumb bin. And we create the straight side. Now let's put these through the machine. So as you can see here, I have these lined up. They're all facing, the, you don't wanna get confused about which side you're supposed to be sewing on. So I always have the side that I'm supposed to be sewing on facing towards the body of the machine. So I'd be sewing on this side, this side, this side, you get the idea, that side. Typically I would have a lot more pairs and I would send them all through. But for this video, we'll just, we'll just start with these and see what happens. So the next one goes right under the machine. This is called chain piecing. I don't cut the thread in between the pairs. And then the next one. But the nice thing about crumb quilting is if you want your seam to be a little bigger or smaller, you can really change it up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be consistent like regular quilting. actually a good example let me let me do this one together with you I'm not gonna trim this I'm just going to put this through for now and see what happens you don't always have to trim but I always think it's better but in this case let's just let's just go for it so as you can see I have this big long strip here and this teeny tiny piece I'm just putting this teeny tiny piece along the edge and I'm gonna sew down then I'm going to take another piece that kind of matches this fabric. Let's find one. Let's do, let's do this one. That matches. And put this one under as well. Again, I'm not trimming here, which isn't the best, but every now and then it's okay. I'm going to go all the way down. So you can see I'm just adding pieces onto this long strip. And then I'll be able to trim those apart when I get to the end. 
I think we have room for one more. We'll do this piece. That will look nice. Colors kind of go together. Now, Darlene Michaud, she has a YouTube channel. She, she does this quite a bit. You should check her out. Her last name is M-I-C-H-A-U-D, I think, Michaud. I always say it in my head as Macaud. That's not what it is. It's Darlene Michaud. She's kind of the crumb queen. So now you take these apart, and then in between your little pieces here, you trim, and you can open that up, and I would iron that. Darlene Michaud does not like ironing. I am, I'm kind of of the opinion that ironing is essential, especially in crumb quilting, but you all should do what you wanna do. And here's the last piece. So this used to be, all three of these used to be on this long strip. And then now they're their own little doubled pieces. Very cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim all of these apart here and press them open. Here are the pairs that we just made. And so now what I'm gonna do is take, you know, these pieces that I've already started putting together and see if I can start pairing anything onto here. So for example, this could look kind of cool. I could attach that on there or this one like that. And I think this is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna to have to think about, I think I need to add a little bit more onto this before I can attach it to here. Like I might um, square up this top part, add another piece of fabric to the top, and then I'll be able to attach that more easily. So let's find a piece of fabric for this. How about this? So what I'll do is I'll flip these right sides together, cut right along here. Here, let's just do that. All right, I'm gonna put this right along here get my cutting ruler and trim. Then, as you know, this goes to my sewing machine facing a certain direction. And now let's take a look at these pieces again. So I'm gonna put this one aside because this one I already have a plan for. And let's see, what do we have now? We have this kind of cool piece and maybe Actually, these ones kind of go cool together that I just made. Why don't I add a piece to the bottom of this one here and then I can attach those together? Let me find a piece for the bottom. How about that? So what I'll do is I'll trim this edge off and then attach this to this and then attach this full piece to here. Flip this right sides together and trim along the edge here. And then this goes next to my sewing machine. Next, I'm going to put, I think, these two together here. How about this? Like that. So I'm gonna flip this and trim right here. I have this piece that's already put together. I think that this used to be part of one of the squares and when I squared it off, this is what I was left with. And, I, and this would go nicely here. I'll just trim the bottom of that off. This could go nicely with this one and it's kind of a good size, so I'll put those two together. And these two pieces were already existing. We didn't do these together, but I'm noticing that I can flip this over and pair those two up. And at this point, I have so many pairs that I'm gonna start forgetting what to do next. So let's put these through the machine. At this point, I've put through, I've chain pieced all the pieces that we just talked about. I'm gonna leave the rest of these on the machine, but I'm gonna cut the first two off because the first two are the ones that we had plans for. I'm gonna iron these open, and this was what I was talking about in terms of forgetting what the, the next steps were, because sometimes if you get too ahead of yourself, you're like, what was I gonna pair this with? And what I was gonna pair this one with was this monster piece, which is super cute. And how am I going to do that? What a good question. I actually feel that maybe I now need to add a piece onto this side of the monster, 
or maybe this top side. I think I need to keep going on these two pieces kind of separately. This one actually is probably big enough. Maybe I'll put a piece up here. Um, but this one I think I need to work on a bit before I can before I can pair these together. So I'll think about that. Here was the other one that I had a specific plan for. Let's iron this one open. So I was going to do this. That will look cool. So I'm going to put those right sides together and trim that and put it through the machine. Uh, and then I'm gonna think about this for a second. I kind of like this piece here. So I'm gonna attach that. I'll put the right sides together and then cut right along here and sew. So I'll do that for that one. And then for this guy, I have more monster here. This one was already put together. I think I'm gonna add that to the bottom. These two may not end up being connected. It, initially, I thought that they would, but the more I kind of work on them, they may just be separate pieces, which is fine. So let's attach this piece to here and this piece to here. Then I'll probably cut off all the pieces of my sheet machine and see what we have at that point. So I need to cut all of these apart off the string. I'll do that in a second, but I was just noticing that I have this piece that was already made along with this one, and that maybe I would somehow connect these two together, maybe like that. So I'm gonna put that aside, and that will be my next round of pairs. But let's see what we have here. This is kind of the fun part because you don't really know how it's gonna look. You can kind of imagine how these pieces will look together, but you really don't know until you iron them open and it's kind of like a fun surprise. So let's see. Okay, so these were two blocks that were already created that I just sewed together. And let's see how we feel about this. That's really fun. And I almost feel like maybe I should do that or that. Remember these two pieces used to be together and I said it was too big, I was gonna cut it in half, which is what I did. And now it's kind of cool because it has this pear sticking out of there. I kind of like that, but I'm not ready to commit to that yet. Um, that's kind of fun, I like that better, but then you have this pink piece sticking up. Let's keep ironing some of these open and see what else we have. Now, this is a really cute piece, but I need to start getting some bigger pieces around here because if you have too many small pieces and they continue to be small, there's it just ends up having so many seams and it gets bulky and won't lie, fl lie flat. So I need to find some big chunks of fabric to start going around here. That's cute. Again, I'm gonna need a strip here to kind of make, to stabilize these four pieces in a row. How about that? Let's do that. So let's take a look at how to cut this. Cause this is, this could be a little tricky because you see how this is not even close to a straight edge and you can't really just flip this over and cut because you'll lose a lot of the fabric. So let's, let's take a look at how to do that. So for something like this, where this pink piece comes in so far, you wanna cut these separately instead of putting the right sides together and making your cut, you wanna cut them separately. So I'm gonna put my ruler. You can kind of tilt this any way you want. You could kind of do a pretty severe diagonal or you could kind of cut it as straight as possible, but I'm gonna kind of split the difference and go right about there. And then I'll do the same with this side. And then when you flip them on top of each other, that will go quite nicely. And now typically, I don't like to have two of the same fabrics touching, but in this case, I actually kind of really like it. I'm not sure why, but let's sew these two together. I found this yellow piece that I think I'm gonna attach right onto here. Let's open up some of these other pieces and see, and see what we have. Ooh, this is very cool. You can tell already. This piece I found, it was already kind of in, in my stash. Uh, there's that piece. We have this one. These ones could kind of all 
three go together nicely at some point, but they're not ready for that yet. Let's open this one up and see how this one looks. Good. All right, so I could attach these together like that, which would be kind of neat. I like that some are going um, vertical and then some are going horizontal. I like the look of that. Let me think about that, think on that. I might, I might do that. Ooh, this one is gonna be fun, I can tell, yeah. This is like one of my favorite pieces that we've put together so far. Almost looks like a little house, doesn't it? I love this so much. This was a pre-existing piece. I could, no. How about that? That could work. Or the other way, like that. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. All right, I tried that one. All right, we'll keep thinking on that. There's the monster block. That's so cool. That's really fun. Maybe I'll put these two together. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'll put these ones together like that. Nope, like this. This is the way they should go. I'll do that. Now we have this one to open up here. That's kind of interesting. Perhaps what I will do, I could cut off part of this and then attach it up here. Um, I think I'm gonna cut off part of this anyway, just to make the size better. It would be nice if I could put some of these pieces together. Maybe I'll put these two together. Let's do that. So I will again cut my diagonal and then attach that piece there. Let's see what we have left. We have this piece left, this one, this one, and this one. I could put these two together like this. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's put these two together. Again, here are all our pieces. I'll cut them apart. They're getting bigger, which is really exciting. Uh, that's one of the, the joys of crumb quilting is watching the pieces come together that not too long ago were teeny tiny little bits. Now we can open them up and see what we have. Press this one from the back. So whenever I have to open something, this piece here, this side here, has a bunch of seams together. So if you open it, you're really working around a lot of these seams. But the other side has no seams, it's just straight. So when you open it this way, it's nice and clean and easy. So I always press on the side that has less seams, and then I open it, and it makes pressing it open much cleaner and easier. This is looking very nice. Let's take a look at this. What I would want to do next is put a strip at the bottom, not necessarily this one, I don't think this really goes, but something like that. And you could even, again, do it at the diagonal, something like this. Because all these pieces, you want to you know, now have a clean line. That's why I like to save these strips. I kind of put these strips aside at the beginning. And it is fun and time saving to you know, put these under the machine like I initially did where I had this strip and then I put a piece of fabric and sewed it on, a piece of fabric and sewed it on. But then I feel a little bit like you're wasting these strips. I need to find a strip for this. Uh, let's see, like that could be kind of cool. How about this green? I like that. I think this green goes nicely kind of with this piece here. So I will cut a piece of this. Give this a nice iron here, this strip. I don't want it to be too straight across. I do want it to be on the diagonal. So I'm gonna cut it kind of up this way. That way I'll still make sure to have at least one Eiffel Tower in there. Maybe I do, hmm, 
Maybe I do want to get two. Nope, I'm going to cut it on the diagonal. I'll get at least one of the Eiffel Towers. And then I can save this piece to continue crumb piecing with. This is still usable, so I'll save that and attach this onto the bottom. Actually, that's the top. That's the front. Let's see what other pieces we made. Here's the monster piece that we attached to the heart fabric. Let's see how this one looks. Wow. That's pretty cool. I really like that a lot. I bet we'll be able to attach something on the top or the bottom soon. Here's a relatively small one. Oh, you know what I like? What I'm noticing? We have kind of like the two circle-y kind of, these mirror each other kind of nicely. That's cool. Hopefully I didn't ruin this piece, which is my favorite, by attaching this heart piece on. Let's see how it looks. That's great. Look at this. You know, once you get another piece on here with the seam allowance, these are just gonna be little bitty pieces here. That is so cool. That's a nice one. I like how these two kind of complement each other. And that's it. Those are all the new pieces. So that is where we're going to stop today. And you may be thinking, Nora, you didn't finish anything. And that is true. That is kind of the crumb piecing lifestyle is you just keep on going forever. I will put a couple pictures at the end of this video of what we just made, what we just created. And we're going to keep going. At some point, we will have a finished quilt. And I think it's going to be the coolest quilt in the history of quilts. I mean, all these teeny tiny pieces from all these different projects coming together. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Happy crumb quilt piecing. Bye.